people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. We now know who it is, Shannon Courtney, former WBA bantamweight champion, Shannon Courtney. We now know who she's going to be fighting in her rebound fight, her comeback fight, her first fight after having dropped a decision to unbeaten Jamie Mitchell, then unbeaten Jamie Mitchell. Shannon is going to be fighting Gemma Rueg. Gemma Rueg, who sports a professional record of five wins with five losses, no draws. 37 years old, a journey woman, a rebound fight for Shannon Courtney. It's taken Shannon Courtney quite a while to return to action, so much so that Jamie Mitchell is no longer this division's reigning WBA champion. She lost that fight to unbeaten Nina Hughes. Caught me by surprise because I thought Jamie was going to win that thing. Yeah, I'm not even going to lie to you. I went with Jamie Mitchell to not only beat Nina Hughes, but stop Nina Hughes. And apparently that wasn't the case. Nina upset the apple cart for Jamie. Now Nina's the bantamweight division's WBA champion. So much for a rematch between Shannon Courtney and Jamie Mitchell. Without the WBA title, it's hard to imagine that Shannon Courtney is going to want to share the ring with Jamie for a second time. There will be no need. Not dissimilar from what we saw with the Rachel Ball fight and what was supposed to be the Rachel Ball rematch. Things got in the way, things happened, and the second fight never materialized. And I think a Jamie Mitchell rematch, well, now it's going to go the way that the Rachel Ball rematch went. And that's nowhere. Rachel, like Jamie, won a decision over Shannon Courtney, but the second fight didn't materialize. You get the sense that what they're going to do now, provided that Shannon wins this weekend, is fast-track her to uh, Nina Hughes. Fight. For the WBA title, and whether or not Shannon decides to run it back with Jamie Mitchell beyond that fight, provided she emerges the winner, well, I'll tell you what I think. I think she still has unfinished business with Jamie, whether Jamie's champion or not. And I would like to see her run it back with Jamie. I'm just not convinced that the Shannon Courtney people will take that chance, will take that gamble. Because what's in it for them? Certainly not the Alphabet title, not the WBA title. If they want that, all they've got to do is go see Nina. Who I grossly underestimated. I haven't had the chance to see the footage of Nina upset the apple cart for Jamie, but I've got to get around to it if I am to understand what are Shannon Courtney's chances against Nina Hughes? What are the odds that Shannon Courtney will have more luck opposite the ring Nina Hughes than what she had opposite the ring Jamie Mitchell? She's got to get through Journey Woman, veteran fighter, Gemma Rueg first this weekend on the undercard of Warrington versus Lopez. Gemma Rueg, who debuted as a professional last year and has already seen action seven times. Seven this year. Seven fights. Out of those seven fights, three, most of those victories, most of those wins are over journey women, other journey women, girls with upside down records. One girl she fought lost 92 times. 92! She's coming right off a loss over the United States' own amateur standout, Virginia Fuchs, the captain. That was a little over a month ago in October. And this weekend, she's going to be opposite the ring. Former champion, Shannon Courtney, who's got a lot of ring rust, she needs to shake off. This is her first fight since the Jamie Mitchell fight. Her first fight since the knee surgery. The operation she had after the Mitchell fight, the Mitchell loss. I'm expecting a better Shannon Courtney than the one we saw the last time out. Shannon Courtney, who's got a strong right hand and two good feet. Mobility is one of Shannon Courtney's strengths. She's a better fighter than she's given credit for, but because she's not anybody's sweetheart, that often gets overlooked. Shannon is a capable fighter, a capable boxer. It is imperative that she get past Gemma Rueg this weekend because on the other side of the Gemma Rueg fight is the world title picture, the world title scene, a potential showdown with Nina Hughes that could lead to a potential rematch with Ebony Bridges. Potential unification fight. A unification match provided that Ebony makes it past her mandatory challenger and countrywoman Shannon O'Connell. Don't forget. That's on the undercard of Warrington versus Lopez this weekend also. I figure. 
If Ebony Bridges wins that fight and she beats Shannon O'Connell, she'll likely be matched against the winner of Shannon Courtney versus Nina Hughes for the IBF and WBA titles. The women's bantamweight division is fast heating up, as is the world title picture, and it is imperative that Shannon Courtney get to the other side of the Gemma Rueg fight so she can make it to the Nina Hughes fight. So she can see herself crowned a two-time WBA bantamweight champion. You know, if Ebony beats Shannon O'Connell this weekend, there's not much chance she faces Shannon Courtney for a second time unless Shannon Courtney can get that WBA title back. There is enough work needs doing, enough work to go around. And Shannon, Shannon's got to hit the ground running. She's got to beat Gemma Ruick. I expect that she will. At minimum, I go with Shannon Courtney to win a points decision, but I haven't forgotten that Shannon Courtney actually has one of the better right hands, backhands in today's bantamweight division. She's a stronger puncher than she's given credit for. In any event, I am going with Shannon Courtney to win this weekend and make it past Gemma Rueg. We then turn to men's lightweight and super lightweight news. It appears that we now know who Ryan Garcia is going to be fighting early next month. He's going to be fighting Mercito Hesta. Very experienced guy. Been around the block a few times. A lightweight, a southpaw preparation for what is to be the Ryan Garcia versus Gervonta Davis showdown later on next year. A day after showtime officially confirmed Gervonta Davis's January 7th clash with Hector Garcia, we now have word of Ryan Garcia's January endeavor. Multiple outlets report that King Rye is gearing up to face Mercito Hesta in Austin on either the 21st or 28th of January at 140 pounds, eh? Less than ideal weight for Mercito Hesta. He's more of a lightweight than a super lightweight. But Ryan, Ryan's up there at 140 pounds now, so... He's not going to come down for Hesta. He's not going to come down in weight unless he absolutely has to. Hesta, who sports a professional record of 33 wins, 3 losses with 3 draws, 7 team knockouts, whom you may recall as one of the many next Pacquiao hype trains before Miguel Vasquez schooled him a decade back, isn't in the same universe as Hector Garcia as far as divisional relevance or potential to throw. A wrench into the big April blockbuster, but he can at least still put on a show, as seen when he ended a 2.5 year layoff by outwarring Joel Diaz in April. He's also a southpaw, which I'm certain the DAZN crew will hype relentlessly. Garcia, 23-0 with 19 KOs, is absolutely going to mulch him. Don't get me wrong, I just feel like we can trust Hesta to go out on his shield and produce some sort of highlight before all said and done. We can also expect Tank to give Garcia grief for his choice of opponent, which should entertain in its own right. It is true that Hector Garcia for Gervonta Davis is a more ambitious choice than, say, Mercito Hesta. The Gervonta Davis versus Hector Garcia fight has more banana skin energy than Ryan taking on Hector Garcia is not a bad fighter and he's a current reigning WBA super featherweight champion even though his fight with Gervonta is at lightweight all the same to the eye he is a better fighter than Mercito Hesta you sure about that Hector Garcia versus Mercito Hesta at lightweight you think Hector wins that fight let's not beat around the bush here we all know that these are relatively safe choices that are not intended to jeopardize the showdown between them the showdown between Ryan and Gervonta that's why Gervonta fighting a super featherweight and that's why ryan's fighting a lightweight you want to split hairs over whose matchmaking is a little bit more ambitious you can do that that you know hector he is a champion after all whereas mercito he's never been a champion before but that doesn't necessarily mean that hector would beat mercito up there at lightweight doesn't mean he wouldn't what it does mean is that it doesn't matter because both matches both javante davis's next fight and ryan's next fight those are just preludes to what is supposed to be a bigger fight the fight between them now, i don't I don't think the matchmakers for either one of these fights, I don't think it was their intention to put these fighters in harm's way when a much bigger fight awaits them beyond January. So let's not split hairs over who's fighting a better fighter. Ryan Garcia is going to return to action in January opposite the ring Mercito Hesta, who's only seen action once in the last two and a half years. He sat out all of 2020, he sat out all of last year, and he returned to action in April of this year opposite the ring Joel Diaz. We won a unanimous decision against. It was the only fight that he had this year. He's set to take on Ryan Garcia early next year. He satisfies certain physical and tactical requisites that would help prepare Ryan for a short, stumpy fighter who also happens to be a southpaw. That's an 
adequate description of Mercito Hesta opposite the ring, Ryan Garcia. He's not a carbon copy of Gervonta. He's not the same fighter. Not the same puncher that Gervonta is, but he is a shorter guy and he is a southpaw. Ryan Garcia has had his fill of southpaws. If you've been paying attention, Luke Campbell, Javier Fortuna. Now he's set to take on Mercito Hesta. It's all intended to be preparation for a Gervonta Davis fight. He's always prioritized the Gervonta Davis fight over any and every other fight, including a Devin Haney fight. You don't think he's fighting yet another southpaw in succession by accident. No, it's by design. The real glaring difference between Gervonta Davis's upcoming fight with Hector and Ryan's upcoming fight with Marcito is that one of those fights comes with a heftier price tag than the other. Gervonta Davis's fight is a box office fight. It's a pay-per-view. Whereas Ryan's fight, you can see that as part of your already existing DAZN subscription. And if you don't have a DAZN subscription, you can do the month-to-month -month thing, which will still come out being cheaper than paying $80 to see Gervonta Davis keep busy. I mean, the author of that article I just read, he might have felt so inclined to split hairs over who's fighting the better guy, who's fighting the better fighter. But both fights are intended to be just the prelude to a bigger fight, a much bigger fight between Ryan and Gervonta. And the real glaring difference, what really separates them is the price tag. What really separates them is that one fight is a pay-per-view that will likely cost in the neighborhood of $80 and one fight isn't. There's no mention of that in that article. Bit of common sense is required. Do you think the matchmakers over there at TGB or the matchmakers over there at Golden Boy, do you think it's their intention to put their prize stallions in harm's way ahead of what's supposed to be a major cash fight, one of the bigger fights you can hope to make in the sport? You think it's their intention to match their... You think they want to jeopardize that fight? Of course they don't. If they didn't view Hector Garcia as a walkover, they wouldn't stick Javante Davis in there with him, and the same applies to Mercito Hesta. They're both keep busy fights. They're both both just preludes. They're intended to be at least. What you have to ask yourself as a consumer is, is it worth your hard-earned dollars? Is it worth your hard-earned cash to see Gervonta Davis keep busy? Now, I don't even think that the Hector Garcia fight is a bad fight. I don't think Hector Garcia is a bad fighter, but I'd be lying to you if I told you that I think that's box office worthy. It's not. It's just a keep busy fight. It's a prelude to the Ryan Garcia fight, and that shouldn't cost me or you 80 bucks to watch. No, we get better fights than that all the time on DAZN, and and ESPN. Just saying. Just in keeping with the theme of Ryan Garcia versus Javante Davis ahead of the Hector Garcia fight. Javante Davis is not sleeping on Hector. He's ready to go through everybody at 135 pounds. And I feel like those statements will hold a lot more weight with people when they actually see Gervonta share the ring with Ryan. Right now, he's about to share the ring with Hector, yet another PBC stablemate of his. We're not sleeping on this guy. I know we got two fights lined up, but this is the main one that we're focused on, because you know what I mean? It's been a lot of talks in the boxing world, and I ain't really trying to do no more talking. I'm ready to, you know what I mean, go through everybody. You know what I mean? That's in my way. Who are in that division? That 135 pound division. But you know what I mean? This Garcia is the first person that we've got to focus on. So we've got to get through him first. If for any reason the Ryan Garcia fight doesn't happen, people should feel like they've been taken for a ride because you will notice that they announced the Ryan Garcia fight before the Hector Garcia fight, even though the Ryan Garcia fight's not even done. So why didn't you announce that one first? Did you announce that one first so that it would help sell this one, this fight with the lesser known Hector Garcia. I was always one of them guys that stayed focused to know that everybody in front of you is a threat. You know what I mean? So we know that Hector Luis Garcia is coming. You know what I mean? Not to say I watch him, I watch him a lot. You know what I mean? I watch all my opponents. You know what I mean? Even down to training. I know what they're doing day in, day out. And people are going to know what you're doing if anything happens to that Ryan Garcia fight because that's what they're waiting for, not this. It's a fair warning. The Ryan Garcia fight is a much bigger fight than the Hector Garcia fight. And you might be able to fool your most loyal cult followers by telling them whatever you tell them if something happens to that fight. But the truth of it is, most people are going to know that you're full of shit. So that fight better happen if you beat Hector. That fight better happen after this one. Because if it doesn't, your credibility with most of the paying public is down the toilet. Javante Davis detailed his decision to not re-sign with Mayweather Promotions, saying, first and foremost, I have to give love 
to Mayweather Promotions and all they have done for me. But I am definitely out of contract for sure, Davis said on social media. It's just a test run right now, this. You know what I mean? I'm on my own. Not necessarily. TGB Promotions, Tom Brown is promoting this show and Gervonta Davis still is with Al Heyman. So he's not a, according to Hoyle, network and promotional free agent. He's still on Showtime. He's still boxing PBC fighters. It's just a test run now with this. You know what I mean? I'm on my own, but much love to Mayweather Promotions. I'm just doing my own thing right now. That said, in the future, we can work together or anything like that. I'm just trying to put my own pants on. When explaining the split, Davis put the problems down to Mayweather looking after his own interests with his exhibition career. It's long been said that Floyd Mayweather's ego is far too big. He's too self-centered to be an effective promoter. That he's too busy still promoting himself to effectively promote anyone else. Floyd is out doing him. He's always been like that. Do you know what I mean? I have to focus on what I can focus on, said the pound for pound star. He already did what he had to do. I'm not going to lie. If I did what he did in the sport, I'd be the same way. I don't fault him for staying to himself. But it's also a type of thing like come back and help too. But much love to Mayweather Promotions. It's no bad blood. Well, it's definitely something if you felt so inclined to leave. Javante Davis was really all they had. And if he's not going to work with them moving forward, who else do they have to fill his shoes? Leonard Ellaby is all but out of a job, because if he's not promoting Javante Davis's fights, whose fights is he promoting? He's going to try to turn Rolly Romero into a pound-for-pound -pound star. That'll be the day. Javante Davis says he's ready for everybody at 135 pounds. And as stated, until he's actually in the ring with Ryan Garcia, those kind of statements won't hold no way. You want people to believe that you're ready to fight the Devin Haney's and Shakur Steve Stevenson's of the world. Those fighters, those are top rank fighters. You sharing the ring with Ryan Garcia, does that necessarily mean that you're also going to be able to make fights with top rank? Ryan is not perceived as being the same threat to Javante that those two kids are. There's a reason that Floyd, back when he was still promoting Javante Davis, there's a reason he instructed those two guys specifically to do their own thing and leave Javante Davis alone. Floyd's not in the picture anymore. Javante Davis is saying he's putting his big boy pants on. So moving forward, if he beats Hector Garcia and he beats Ryan Garcia, the expectation will be that he's got to do what he's got to do to make those other fights happen. Because you ain't got Floyd or Leonard to blame it on anymore. It's on you now. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We are thinking several months into the future, several months into next year. We are. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if Javante Davis holds to his word because that's essentially what people want. His biggest critics, they want to see him share the ring with other top-notch fighters that are out there. Not to say that Hector's not a good fighter. He's a good fighter, but he ain't Shakur Stevenson. He ain't Devin Haney. He isn't thought of as being of that same ilk, that same caliber of fighter. And these are the guys people want to see Javante Davis in there with.